Hello, and welcome to Replay Value. Bradio's Flyers is one of the most upbeat, fun, groove-inducing OPs I've ever had the pleasure of listening to with colorful and exciting visuals to match. Characters are dancing, swinging, fist pumping. It's a total blast, and it's one of my favorite openings ever. And the show it's attached to has, well... So what's the deal here? Flyers would seem to be a complete tonal mismatch for the kind of material that Death Parade is dealing with. We're talking about a dancing number put in front of characters determining whether their souls will be reincarnated or voided out after frequently gruesome deaths. Yet it is my contention that Flyers not only matches one of the surface takeaways of Death Parade, but also through that tonal disparity helps to point out one of the major moral issues that the audience is supposed to be asking throughout the series. As is somewhat traditional for stories dealing with death, Death Parade is also a reminder about the value of life. Sure, these characters have died, or in the case of the Arbiters, are undying, but they are still alive insofar as they can still experience new things, and the Arbiters get a lot of pleasure from taking things from the living world, alcohol for one. This space serves, at least a few times, as a place to come to terms with their mortality, and that's not an inherently grim conclusion. I think Flyer speaks to that. The fun that the cast is having, especially the two humans, is a reminder of the bright side of existence as we see in episodes like the date episode. I also can't help but think of the episode with Mayu specifically. Her emotional arc of the episode kind of matches the tonal arc of the OP basically perfectly. She's having a grand old time up until the moment where it suddenly becomes clear that they're in a death game. Kind of like how the OP has all this sinister imagery if you look underneath the surface, like the puppets, the giant skull, and the organs in this explosion. And even with the knowledge that she's died, she's still able to enjoy her limited remaining existence and even make her own decision about her life. That's not even getting into all of the characters who regret their deaths. A not so subtle reminder to make the most of what you've got because you could randomly die at any moment due to factors out of your control. Yeah, Death Parade is all sunshine and rainbows, but I think that emotional dichotomy is intentional. You have some really dark episodes here, and their darkness is enhanced by the subversive introduction. How can the cast have fun when they are constantly making decisions over where people's souls go? The ultimate judgment, and intentionally drawing out their worst impulses and seeing the results of said impulses. I think that speaks to a slew of moral questions, which can best be summarized with, are Death Parade's judgments fair? The Arbiters create situations which stress out their guests, designed to force them to make decisions with their own lives on the line. Meanwhile, the vast majority of Arbiters seem not to care. Ginty, the only other Arbiter we get to watch actually perform a judgment, explicitly states that he enjoys putting people in these awful situations. Known as playing billiards, and there's just a huge lack of empathy across the board. And worse, a lack of understanding. Deckham's the shift from that, sure, but he's the exception, not the rule. There is something weird about being judged by people who cannot possibly understand your circumstances. The Arbiters are creating life or death decisions, and yet they cannot experience the latter. They have no context for the kind of decision they'd make if they had to choose the life of a stranger or their own. They can't understand why someone would lie to someone they loved to ease their suffering even if it made them look like the bad guy. Sure, Deckham learns his lesson, but there's your proof that the arbitration process as it existed was flawed. And at the risk of starting a huge moral argument in the comments, should you judge people based on actions they take in life or death situations? Is that starting point even fair to begin with? I almost can't help but think of something like the case of the Spelunkian Explorers, where four men eat a fifth in order to survive and then are judged for murder. But in a death parade scenario, those four are forced by the judge instead of circumstance to either eat the fifth man or die. Do extenuating circumstances matter? Should you be able to hold someone accountable for protecting their own life? Are the Arbiters, by the nature of creating these situations, entirely without blame and acting completely morally? These are legitimately dark questions that the show encourages the audience to grapple with. Nona and Mayu and the black-haired woman all raise points along these lines. And yet, here they are having a great time, having forgotten all of the emotional pain that they've put these people through. And that's by design. We learn that they lose their memories of the humans they judge after a while, and they do it mechanically because if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to be arbiters. 
implying that the process is indeed flawed and the weight of it would crush them if given the time to consider it. And so Flyers, in a weird way, humanizes these inhuman beings. Nona talks a lot about how they don't have human emotions, but Flyers and the other slice of life moments allow us to see them as human-esque. They have interpersonal relationships, things they like, they make mistakes, they break the rules. They are effectively human with the exception that they do not die. And I think that makes the moral questions more difficult, because if they were truly robots, it'd be easier to ascertain the rules slash systems that the arbitrations are done with. But all of the arbiters have different personalities, so each one values different things and does things differently. The arbiters are basically as complex as the people who they're judging. And Flyer's tonal disparity from the rest of the show makes that complexity abundantly clear, which in turn makes the question of, are the judgments fair, both a larger systemic question that the audience is able to grapple with broadly, basically if the very concept of this style of judgment is fair, and on a case-by-case -case basis, which allows the audience to evaluate the arbiter's decision by using their own moral code to determine if this specific judgment was fair. Flyers is an amazing OP purely for its music and visuals, but it elevates to one of my favorites because of how its tone raises questions about the story it accompanies. Death Parade is full of moral and philosophical questions. Prepping this video had me rethinking my opinion on legal positivism, which is more than I can say for anything else I've watched in recent memory. And I was also reminded of how much I love the vagueness of the world constructed in it. We understand so little which makes sense because death is something beyond human comprehension. Anyway. The fact that the show raises questions of what it means to be alive and what it means to be human and moral questions in general is not surprising. But how Flyers influences us to consider those same questions through a totally different lens than the show is something that, in my opinion, makes it pretty darn special.